All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about section six and what we're going to be learning throughout this section of styles and semantics. So we're going to cover the following tags, div, span, header, nav, main, section, article, aside, details, dialogue, summary, data, and footer. And then we'll go over a summary of all these tags that we talked about. So that mind, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the div tag. So the div tag defines a section in a document. Okay. So let's go ahead and write that in here. Okay. So we're going to do left bracket, div, right bracket, space, and then a dash. And then below here, let's actually just write out the word div, hit tab, and then you can see exactly what a div tag looks like. Now, what it's doing is it's going to ask you for a class. We don't need a class in this instance. We're just going to do the plain old div tag instead of something beyond that. And then we'll use a tag that we learned in the previous section, which is an H1. And we'll call this, we'll just type in H1. And this is my heading one. Okay, right click open in the browser. And take a look at that. And you get this is my heading. Now, if I right click and inspect this, you can see it's inside the div. Okay. So if I were to take this and you can select this and drag it out, it's going to change the position a little bit, not much. But that's because we haven't styled the div with CSS. And we're not going to be talking about CSS other than in the final project where I'll talk about it briefly and that's about as far as we're going to go with it. So with that, that's the div tag. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the span tag. So the span tag defines a section in a document. So let's write that in here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we'll do span and then we'll do a dash and then a space. And then below that, we'll just type the word span and hit tab. And Adam will autofill all of your tag needs, which is great. So a span, the way that I've used a span, and there's different ways to do that, but the idea with this is simple. So if I go before the span and I do H1, okay, and I tab, if I just type in the word H1 and tab, right? Okay, let's do it like this. I'll return, type in H1 and tab, and then delete this right here, and put this H1 here, okay? And then this one over here, okay? Now, what I can do is I can type in the word learn, and then in the span, tech. So you can see the differences that are offered. So if I open that in the browser, you're going to see learn tech, right? And it's the same right now. But if we utilize the style tag, which is what we talked about earlier, um, and I just do style, okay, and we do uh, span, and I do color red, okay, and then I right click and open in the browser. Not really on Finder, sorry about that. We're going to right click and open in the browser. Okay, now I'm able to separate the span tag from the H1 tag. And this is a way to do that without having to um, give it a class or an ID. You can just give it a different tag and then you're able to separate it. So this is a technique that I used when I had a multicolored logo. I had a blue and a white logo, um, and I still use that now. And so the best way to optimize your website is to use text instead of an image because it easily will render in a web browser if you use text over an image. An image is still fast, but text is really fast. So that's how I learned about the span tag years ago and how I utilized it was to create a logo, okay? And it's commonly used that way. 
Um, so the span tag is a very important tag to use and to understand. And so there you go. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the header tag. So the header tag defines a header for a document or a section. Now, specifically what I utilize the header tag for is in the project, and I'm gonna show you the project files real quick just so you can see an example of the header tag actually in action here, is if you go over here and you look at the, the way that I utilize the header tag, basically what I did is I made it the top section of the website. And I put the logo and the navigation inside of there so that it's separate and easy to find and identify, okay? And so that's really what I use the header tag for is to organize my tags in a way that makes sense. And so you put the header at the top, the body in the middle, right? And then the footer at the bottom, right? So let's do that. So let's do the header, okay? And then let me type out just header and hit tab, okay? So again, that's the header tag. And think of it as a divider, okay? So a way to separate your content. So you have on a website, you have the top part or the header, and then you have the body. So the top part, which is the header, is gonna be stationary throughout the website. Okay, that's your navigation or your menu, how you can get around the website, right? Then the body is where you put the content, so the content changes, but the header remains the same, and that's why I use the header at the top of the page so that I can put my navigation in there, maybe a logo in there, and anything else that's stationary would go in there, okay? Now, the other thing you can do is you can utilize multiple headers in your page if, let's say, that you have a subheader at the top where you want to do like a uh, promotional, like a sales uh, promotion where you just use it on one page. That's another way you can use it is to layer that and have the top header be the sales copy and then the bottom header be where the navigation is, okay, with your image. So that's another way to utilize it as well. All right, so that's the header tag. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the nav tag. So the nav tag is important because it defines navigation links. And so if again, we go to my project folder, the finished files, you can see in the previous video where we talked about the header section, how I utilize the nav tag as well. And think of the nav tag as a way to group your links together or your main navigation together. Okay, good. Because before they had semantic tags, which means semantic means like uniform or organized, basically. Okay. And before they had that organization, they they didn't have a standardization of how to do things. It just kind of was whatever you thought would work for your code, that's what you did, okay? I know this because I learned front-end web development back in 2004, and it was a lot different than it was in 2015 when I updated my knowledge of that, and so I've been doing the newer way for six years plus, and I can tell you that the newer way is easier for people learning web development, trying to figure out what they did before really didn't make any sense. And I come from the video world where um, everything is kind of standardized. You know, you know what the standard resolution is for the year that you're in. So for example, in 2021, the standard resolution right now is 4K. They're working on 8K to make that a standardization. Okay. Web development really didn't have that standardization until 2012 when they created and updated HTML to HTML5. And now they have HTML 5.2, I believe is the latest version. Um, but it took them that long. It took eight years from me learning basic HTML to them as the people that standardized web development or uh, 
HTML to update it to the modern world to where you could do responsive design because that was the biggest issue even when I was learning in 2015 was how do you standardize things and make it easier to build websites. And there's a ton of tools out there now, but when I was learning, it was not that way. So let's write out the nav tag here, just so you can see what it looks like. And so what you would do is you'd put the anchor tags inside of there, like I showed you in the project file, project folder uh, finished example. Uh, we would put links in there, and we're going to do that in the final project. So it'll be a lot of fun. But again, this is just a way to understand what the tags do and just see them and understand them because really that's the most important part of front-end web development is understanding what the tags do so that when you need that tag, you know what it does and you can just slap it in there and do what you need to do. You know, So that's the nav tag. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the main tag. So the main tag specifies the main content of a document. So before semantics really came around, and again, I was talking about this in the previous video, um, the div tag was used for everything, okay? So you're gonna notice in upcoming videos when we talk about section, article, aside, details, dialogue, summary, data, and footer, that before they had HTML5, they didn't have any of these tags. These are all HTML5 tags that made everything simpler for the developer to just go in and say, okay, I want a span, I want a header, I want a footer, I want a main, I want a section, I want an article, etc. I want navigation. Um, before that, everything was divs, okay? Every, I mean everything. Everything was divs. And either you were using a class or an ID, which I haven't covered that yet, but basically what you were doing with that is you were giving the class to a div, so this would be an example. Remember when we did the div tag here, okay? I'll, I'll show you by another example real quick. It'll make sense. So if I type in div and I hit tab, and you see how it does class. So we could do uh, div one, okay? It could be the class. I can go into my CSS here, my styling area, my style tag, and I can call on this class, so dot, div one and that's how you identify a class with html and css okay and then what i could do is i could do background uh, black border one pixel solid lime okay right click open in the browser and let's see what happens okay we get the border so with divs, you have to give it a width and a height. So width, let's do 50%. Height, let's do 500 pixels. And let's right click open in the browser. Just so we can go off the map here and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's a class. So what I did is I gave this div a class and then I called on that class and said, okay, I want to call on the class div1, and I want to give it a background of black, a border of one pixel, solid, and then lime green, a width of 50%, and a height of 50, 500 pixels. Okay? That's what you would do for everything. So when you do navigation, when you would do other things, you would use all these different tags that made no sense in terms of how to create a navigation, okay? Or a main tag or a div tag, right? So when you use the main tag, okay, which we're going to do here, okay, so we'll do main. What they did when they created that is they made a more simplistic setup where you could just do like an H1, this is a header, and then right click open that in the browser, and you're going to notice something right away. Okay, it's right there. Now, when I close this and I go up here and I give the main tag the same properties without the uh, width and the height, we do background blue. Okay, and just we'll give it a background of blue. And then I open that in the browser. What do you get? I get blue. 
it automatically has a width and a height. So I don't have to determine that. Okay. And so the main tag, again, what it does is it specifies the main content of a document. So what you can do is you can make sections in your website. And let's say it's the top part of the page. So it's your top uh, story. Let's say it's a news site. Okay. So you have the top story in the main section, and then you have um, another article in another main section, and then another main section. So you have three top stories. So you have the main main, right? The main number one, and then two, two below that. So you have two and three below that. Okay. That's a way to separate the content. Okay. And again, the reason why they developed HTML5 was to focus on content over development. Okay. Because when you're focusing on content, what that does is when you simplify things, then people understand what you're doing. Okay. And so that's the idea of the main tag. All right. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the section tag. So just like the main tag, the section tag defines a section in a document. It doesn't specify the main content of a document like the main tag but it defines a section in the document. So what you can do is what I did in the project, which we're gonna work on at the end of the course, and that is this. You can give each section an ID and then put content inside of there, and that's exactly what I do in the project. We go down and we give each section an ID, and then we put all the content in there, and then go to another section, and we just do it by sections, okay? which makes it easier for you to edit and for you to build as well. And that's really the key here is you want to have a simplistic way to build web pages. Okay, so let's put the section tag here. And then below that, let's type in the word section, hit tab, and then let that autofill there. And then below that, I'm just going to return and we'll leave it like that just so we know what it looks like and what it does. Okay, so that's the section tag. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the article tag. So the article tag is similar to the section tag, but it's a little different in the fact that it defines an article. Okay, so this goes back to my news website example where you would have three main uh, tags used to specify the main content of a document, right? And so we'd have three main sections. With the article, what you can do is you can put articles all over the page and it defines that article. So let's say that you have five articles, you can put five article tags in there and then separate them by sections or whatever you need to do. And it just makes it easier again to lay out content, which again is the key here. Content is king, remember that. So when we go in here, let's do a left bracket article and then uh, it defines an article. And then below that, let's write out the tag. So we'll just write out the word article, hit tab, and there you go. And then you can also give the article a class. So it's similar to what I did with the div. What you could do is you could call this article one and then specify the properties in CSS, article two, article three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and that's how you could separate the content and give it special formatting or properties that you need. Okay, so that's the article tag. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the aside tag. So the aside tag defines content aside from the page content. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to be next to like an article, for example. So an example I want you to think about is WordPress. So WordPress is known for blogging and blogging is very specific content because what they're doing is they're targeting people that are looking for articles and you need to have a place to log the old articles that you have on your blog, for example. So you'd use an aside to do that because it's like a archive of your blog articles, right? So with this, we're gonna do a side Okay, and then it defines content aside from the page content. Okay, so it's exactly what 
the name of the tag is. And then you can also do a class and then separate it that way and give it different properties and positions to wherever you need it to be on your web page to optimize the content for your users. Okay, that's really the idea. Okay, so that's the aside tag. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the details tag. So the details tag defines additional details that the user can view or hide. So for an example on that, let me go a little further with this one. Um, you can do a couple things with this. Um, you can give it a value of open. And if you give it a value of open, it will it specifies that the details should be visible, open to the user. Okay, so that's how you can hide or show details on demand. Okay, so you can use that attribute to do that. So again, that's why it's important to understand what each of these tags do, and just have a general idea so that you can utilize them whenever you need to. Because it's good. Think of understanding the tags as like a tool belt for a builder. If you have all your tools with you when you go to the job site, the job becomes a lot easier, right? Well, it's the same with development. Instead of building a house, we're building a digital house, so to speak. So you need to have all your tools at your disposal so you can do the very best job possible, right? So let's type in the details tag. Okay, and then let's type it in below, and we're good to go. And there you go. So, details is open. So, that's the details tag. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So, in this video, we're going to talk about the dialogue tag. So, the dialogue tag defines a dialogue box or window. Okay, so if I go here and we just write in dialogue, Okay, then let's go below this and let's type in dialogue again and then hit tab. Well, if it, come on now, cooperate with me. <laughs> okay, it doesn't want to cooperate with me, that's fine. So what Adam is telling me is it wants to fight with me, which is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a left bracket dialogue, hit tab, and then we'll do open, okay, and then we'll close that. This is an open dialog window. Okay, then we'll close it. So we'll use that here. And then I'll close that. We'll right click open the browser just so you can see what it looks like. And let's see if it works. There you go. This is an open dialog window. So that's what the dialog window looks like. Okay. And that's the dialog tag. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the summary tag. So the summary tag defines a visible heading for a details element. Okay. So let's take a look at that in a little deeper level here. And we'll talk more about the summary tag. So the summary tag defines a visible heading for the details element. The heading can be clicked on. Click to view, hide the details. The summary element should be the first child element of the details element. Okay, so an example of that would be you're going to do, and we talked about the details element a few videos back, but basically what we're going to do is let's type in summary first here, and then let's go below here, and actually I'm going to put a dash in there just so we have it. Okay, and then below that what I'm going to do with a little space here, we're going to type in summary, hit tab, and now we have the summary in there. So if I right click and open that in the browser, we can see what it does, if anything. And it's not showing anything right now, right? And you see the details panel here, okay? Um, so let's write something in here real quick. This is details, okay? Just so we can kind of put these together. You know what I mean? Um, so let's try that again. I'm going to right click open in the browser and let's see if that works this time. And it does. Okay. So like I said, I can hide and open the details, but with the summary, 
what we want to do is we want to put the summary inside of the details tag. So we would do this. We do details. Okay. So I do a space here and I type in details. And then we put summary inside of there. Okay. Okay. So this is a summary. Okay. And then right click open that in a browser and take a look and see if it cooperates with us. And it does. And then we have this as a summary. So that worked. And that is really the summary tag. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the data tag. So the data tag adds a machine readable translation of a given content. So what it will do is it will translate information for you. So the ele this element provides both a machine readable value for data processors and a human readable value for rendering in a browser. Okay. If the content is time or date related, use the time element instead. Okay. So there you go. So let's kind of look at this real quick and just kind of see what the data tag looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna do left bracket data, right bracket, and then we'll put that there. And then below here, we'll just type in the word data, hit tab, and then you see you get the value. So we'll just put in a random number here, and then do uh, this is data. Okay, right click open that in a browser, take a look at it, see if it will render anything that we want to see. Uh, it's just going to show this as data. Okay. So that's really all there is to the data tag. There isn't much to it. Um, you can give it different values. So data values. So you can work with it that way. Um, an example would be you'd have product names and associate each name with a product number. So you can grab that number when you need it and then use that data that way. So you don't have to remember the name of the product, you remember the number. So an example would be, instead of 373632, we would do 0002, 0003, et cetera, okay? So that's the data tag. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about one of my very favorite tags of all time, literally, the footer. It defines a footer for a document or section. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to put it at the bottom of the page, but here's what a footer element typically contains. Authorship information, copyright information, contact information, site map, back to top links, and then related documents. Also another thing, social media links. So if you wanted to link to your social media, you would just do it with a footer, okay? So those are co all commonly used um, data points with the footer tag. And again, the footer is useful for what I just said, copyright and that kind of thing. If we go to the project files, go to the index.html file, scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see right here I have the footer tag, and then we have copyright, and then a logo in there as well, okay? So that's one way you can utilize it. The other way you can utilize it is you can have authorship information, copyright is what I was talking about, contact information, site map, you can put a link to go back to the top of the page, related documents, and then like I said, social media links as well. So people get access to your social media along with your website. So if I type in footer, hit tab, now we get a footer tag there, and that's the footer tag. So. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Congratulations on finishing Section 6, Styles and Semantics. In this video, we're going to go over an overview of what we learned, or a summary, I should say, of what we learned in this section. So we talked in depth about the following tags. Div, Span, Header, Nav, Main, Section, Article, Aside, Details, Dialog, Summary, Data, and Footer. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next section.